largest uh, pre-mission media events I've done in a while. So I'll be welcome to bring in my name's out to the line. I'll be our NASA mission manager for the U.S. So what we're going to do in the next, uh, next hour or so, uh, Bob, Bob is our floor manager, our floor manager. He's going to talk a little bit about U.S. 6 in general and talk about some of the items that we're bringing up on the deck and how that supports the space station. And after Bob, uh, I think Ken, you're going to come up and talk a little bit. Uh, Jennifer, I'm sorry, Jennifer's going to come up and talk mid deck, some of the science that we're bringing up, some good stuff that's fine. Then Ken's going to come up and talk, uh, and Bob's going to come up and talk a little bit about AMS. And of course, we have uh, Nobel laureate, Professor Ting, he's going to come up and talk about AMS. So we're Glad to have him. Thank you. So, so um, during the hour, if you have any questions, feel free. A lot of times, it's easier if you ask a question when you're downstairs. I actually see the hardware. But if you have any questions during this hour, uh, you know, just raise your hand and we'll help you out. Okay? Okay. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Parks. You know, Bob, can we do one more thing? Can we just have the NASA bonus folks and do some stuff? So, you guys are going to be on I'm Bob Hart, the Boeing uh, Pool Manager for Ground Operations for the Halos. Start this. Jennifer Palmer, NASA Integration Engineer for Utilization and Science Halos. Ken Bowling, NASA AMS Deputy Project Manager. Ron Constantino, DLC Pool Manager. Steve Pickles from the ASC Project Engineer. Jack Kiefer, I'm the NASA Mission Project Engineer here for the Olympics. And Paul Gopalina, NASA Student Engineer. Nicholas Lund, AMS. Michael Bonicardi, NASA Pisa, AMS. And when we get up into the 
space, the arm the shuttle to grab ANS, take it out of the cargo bay, and go to the handoff with the station arm, and then move it to the truck. Here's a, a picture of ANS and high base in a different stand. This is basically what you can see when you go downstairs. And here is a photograph of the two sides of the deck. Downstairs, a lot of that's covered up, and we'll be able to see too much of that. Next slide. Here's the location, or a cat pictorial of what's on it. Um, SPDM is a spare portion of its experience arm, the main arm that will be a spare on the orbit. But basically, we say that everything you see here is there is some science in there, and they're trying to put all the ore used at the station. Again, these last two shuttle sites. So, primarily, the ore used. Sasses or SBN uh, antennas, which are used to communicate through TDRIS, tracking data and relation to light. Um, CTC, cargo transportation container, that's a large box. And in that box, there's a uh, computer control module for the arm spare part. And there's a bunch of uh, electrical components where essentially circuit breakers for the station. Uh, so there's two Sasses. Pressure gas tank here, PGT. Um, that's uh, spare oxygen for the space station, so that's what we stowed up here. And ATA is the ammonia tank assembly. And ammonia is uh, used for cooling on the station, so that will be uh, again spare. And SDPH3 is a science experiment from the Naval Lab and the Air Force Lab, uh, which is um, basically exposure experiments. Um, there's some The uh, carriers, the exposure experiment, I said it's going up on this flight, the C8, and the, uh, the empty carriers were returned were installed uh, in the orbit and the orbit processing facility last August. Um, we closed out, uh, we had some walk downs to make sure that we're in the flight configuration back in December. Um, the weight and CG of uh, the two payloads is now. Week the 15th and 16th. And what that means is we do final weight to make sure what we know the specific weight for flight and center of gravity so that we can use that uh, for the order of calculations for flight. Uh, the payload to the pad and our cannon transporter will be uh, the 21st. We will go into the order on the 25th. We have interface verifications for both the ELC carrier and the AMS payload. That's what we hook up with the, through the RO, RONU and make sure that we have all the, everything that works right with our connections to the order. And then we have an end-to-end -end task. That's where we send data between the centers to make sure all the components work correctly. And then the mid-back uh, lake stove, uh, those are time-critical items that need to be stowed just before the launch. That'll happen on the 18th and then the launch on the 19th. And that's all for me. I'm Jennifer. Next. Okay. Dr. Walter, I am a NASA integration engineer assigned uh, to utilization payloads, um, all the research, and primarily focusing on a lot of the stuff that goes in um, time critical wise. It has late requirements, and we're stowing pretty much the one day before the launch, and then we go out to the runway <coughs> to recover them uh, upon landing so they can get back to their payloads. Um, this list is not inclusive of all of the index science that's going up. It just represents the ones with the time critical requirements. Again, those that are going to go in late or um, come out early on the runway. Um, next several charts kind of summarize these. I'm going to kind of fly through them. Um, there will be more information come out in press kits a little bit later, closer to the mission that the payload office, um, the ISS payload office in Houston. Um, um, frequent flyers, we've um, last couple of flights, we've had a glacier um, going up and down and a cold bag. These are um, items, one of the glaciers, the 
power and the full uh, mega is basically a non powered cooler uh, to, to keep all the samples fixated at a certain temperature going up and coming back. A lot of the stuff is um, biological samples are taken on orbit and stored at, like, say, minus 80 degrees um, in our melting tracks on orbit. And then the glacier and the cold bags are used to bring them up and down. Uh, Jackson had an experiment they've uh, found a couple of times, 2D nanotemplates looking at uh, nanoscale arrays. Biokiss is a new one that the um, Titan Space Agency, Ozzy, is flying this time. It actually is, is comprised of seven different experiments uh, looking at a, a couple of different uh, areas. Um, cell biology, radiation, germination, plant growth. So they, they've got two or three boxes of, about that size, of, you know, about you know, the size of you know, something like that, that are going to be um, Fine up and down. CSI 5, um, this is um, more or less an educational experiment by Biosur at the University of Colorado. Um, on STS 129, you'll have three. Um, this CSI experiment butterflies and spiders in space. They're going to be reflying the spiders. So the picture on the far right on the top there is a picture of uh, one of the spiders, big white blob in the center, um, and the web that it spun on orbit back um, on STS 129. The bottom is another Jax experiment, C spins. They're using cucumber seedlings to look at cryotropism um, uh, and hydrotropism in roots. Cuba um, is a facility that um, I believe was built by, I think, Kentucky Space Consortium. And it is a modular locality in which they can put um, several different um, areas of science. I think they're primarily focused on educational. They go and they express what's on them a bit. And so um, a, lot, a lot of them are flying up and down, not time critical this time, we're going to have some time critical ones, which they're already up to, like, um, like it says, uh, their seventh and eighth flight. Sleep is an ongoing one that's just been looking at the sleep patterns of the astronauts. Integrated immune is a continuing one, also looking at the astronauts and the immune function, um, mostly collecting blood and saliva samples and helping to make sure the astronauts can stay healthy on orbit. In, in space is a material science that goes up and uses the Material Science Research Track, or MSRR. Um, this one is looking, looking at magnetic colloidal fluids, and it's like the se second or third um, uh, generation of their experiment. This is like in space three, I think, for this way. Element bio, the light microscopy module, LMM, is a microscope that's within the fluid integrated rack on orbit. Um, it was built for material science purposes primarily, and now they're um, proving that they can also look at biological samples. For SES 133, they blew up um, some cells to look at with little uh, C. elegant worms, little nematodes that um, I think you might have heard they were actually descendants of some of the ones that survived um, SES 107 Columbia. And so this next flight, they're going to be continuing uh, that experiment. Now, this the bottom one of the previous page. Nanoskeleton is another Jackson one I'm looking again at um, small things. And this one's related to the crystals. NLP cells. NLP is National Lab Pathfinder. They've been flying several flights. These are the, um, the guys that are looking at um, vaccines and other cell growth. Um, the vaccines I've been trying to study to find is um, Seminella, MRSA, or some of the ones, and I'm not sure what, the, what they're looking at next. And night vision. This is another Italian space agency one. They're looking at um, the effects of radiation on, for, for example, astronauts from retina. Shear is another material science one on um, uh, polymer fluids. Um, and again, also we'll use the MSRR material science research track on orbit. Um, these are payloads that are going to be going up and down, um, or being actually coming down in the glacier and the cold back. So these are samples that have been taken on orbit and they're ready to come home. Hair is the next one. Uh, looking at uh, RNA and hair roots. <coughs> micro 3 is um, looking at microorganization uh, inhalation on orbit. And, um, HRP, continuing uh, experiment from the 